All right, in today's lesson, I'm gonna teach you guys how to find the slope of a line that passes through two given points. I'm gonna show you two different strategies to do this. One of them is a lot easier than the other, and it's not the way that most teachers are gonna teach it to you. So first and foremost, you're gonna be taught the slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We're gonna go over this and talk about that, but I'm gonna show you a different one that in my opinion is quite a bit easier. Okay, so let's start with slope formula. We're basically taking our second y value, subtracting our first y value, and then on the bottom, we need to take the second x value, subtract the first x value. So you got an xy coordinate here, an xy coordinate there. First thing I tell my students to do is label xy, xy. So put that down, then just ask yourself which one of those coordinates was given to you first. This one's written down first, so let's just give that ones. This one's written down second, so we're going to give it twos. And now we have everything labeled, and so we should be able to just connect. Say y is a 4, 4 goes right there. y one's a 12, 12 goes right there. I recommend my students put down parenthesis minus parenthesis over parenthesis minus parenthesis before putting the numbers down. Okay, if you don't have parentheses, if you end up getting negative values in here, you're going to have some struggles, some mistakes that might occur when you go into doing this. Okay, so... Let's just take a look. Y2 is in the top left corner, Y1 in the top right, X2 in the bottom left, X1 in the bottom right. So what's my Y2? We labeled them so I can just go, there's Y2, the value is four. Put the four in the parentheses. Where's my Y1? That's a 12, so I'm gonna put a 12 in the parentheses there. X2, bottom left corner, X2 is a negative three, place a negative three right there. And then X1 is a six, so I'm gonna be plugging six in here. You have one, two, three, four spots to fill numbers in with, and you up here have one, two, three, four values. So you just gotta make sure you put the correct numbers in the correct spots so that when you subtract, you're gonna get the answer you're looking for, which will be your slope. It's your change in Y over your change in X. And we're gonna talk about that in the other strategy, which is much quicker in my opinion. Okay, four minus 12. What's well, four minus 12? You're taking away more than you have, so you're actually gonna end up at negative eight. Negative eight for that one. And then negative three minus six, that takes you way back into negative nine. Now, when you have two negatives in a fraction, like you see here, we have to ask ourselves, what's a negative times, or excuse me, what's a negative divided by another negative? You should know by now that a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So you're just gonna change that to positive eight ninths. And that is the slope of a line that passes through these two given points. This slope will rise eight, run nine, rise eight, run nine at a constant rate of change. Now, who wants to learn the quick way? Perfect, here we go. I'm gonna leave change in Y over change in X up here. And I'm gonna show you, for those of you that have a tough time putting these numbers in the right spot, just take 612 and put it into a table of values, 612. 6, 12, 6 is the X, 12 is the Y, negative 3, 4, negative 3, 4. Now you've made a table of values. If we're being told that it's a line that passes through these two points, we don't need any other information because we know it has to stay consistent. All we have to do is find our change in Y values, that would be this, over our change in X values, that would be this. So how did I go from 12 to four? Well, I went down eight, silly Billy. So I just say minus eight over here off to the side and six all the way to negative three. That means I gotta go down nine. So I've got a negative eight here, a negative nine there. Remember slope is our change in Y over our change in X. So what's my change in Y values? Change in Y is negative eight over my change in X values, which is negative nine. Now what's a negative divided by a negative? It's a positive. And what do you know? We ended up getting the exact same slope as we did by using the slope formula. So do you have to use the slope formula? No, there are other techniques, other strategies. Some kids are a lot better at finding slope from a table of values. If you find yourself to be a better table person, use tables. If you don't mind the slope formula, put those parentheses down in those four sections, plug the numbers in, work it out, whatever makes the most sense to you. Use the strategy that's going to benefit you the most. Hopefully this makes sense. Study hard and good luck on your upcoming test.